I want you to meet Ruben. He's a member in our group. He's very smart, very nice, and a great scientist, but he is a chain smoker. And I know he's not the only chain smoker at the BSC because I also use the BSC entrance, and there's always someone smoking there. And one day, while Ruben and I were taking a coffee, and he was smoking a cigarette, we started to discuss about what we knew about cigarette smoking. And it was so clear for us that smoking increased the risk of developing many diseases. But we didn't know what was triggering the diseases. We didn't know the molecular effects of smoking. And indeed, we checked the literature, and where there were thousands of papers associating smoking with cancer, respiratory diseases, but also cardiovascular diseases, metabolic, autoimmune diseases. But there were no papers studying the molecular impact. So I decided to do that myself. What do I mean by molecular impact? In our group we study gene expression. A gene is just a piece of DNA, which main goal is to encode for another molecule, RNA. And while the gene is the same, it can be activated or expressed in one condition but not expressed enough in another condition, and then not functioning properly. To measure this gene expression, we can simply count number of RNA molecules in one condition and compare if this number is significantly different to the other condition. So, does smoking affect gene expression? And if so, how many tissues are affected by smoking? We use the number of genes that change expression as a proxy for severity. So, the most affected tissue, as expected, was the lung. But what we did not anticipate was that the thyroid was the second most affected tissue. The thyroid is a tissue in our neck, which only goal is to create hormones. But in general, we saw that all human tissues are affected by smoking. Now, is the, same ef is the effect the same across tissues, or we see tissue-specific effects? Here, every point is a gene. And I made sure the colors are colorblind friendly, so even Pep should be able to see these points. And we see that the genes affected are very tissue specific. Smoking affects different tissues in different ways, which makes sense because we don't get asthma in the heart, for instance. But we saw a very interesting pattern that was shared across all tissues. These are genes associated with the immune response. So attempts of our body to detoxify smoke toxins. And the fact that we see this in 30 human tissues means that smoke toxins make it to tissues directly exposed to smoke, but also not directly exposed to smoke through blood. Now, a nice thing of our data is that for every gene expression sample, we have much tissue images. So we can study if smoking also affects tissue architecture. We used AI, basically we built deep learning models, trying to distinguish smokers from non-smokers. And we got accuracies over 80% in lung and thyroid, which suggests that smoking is also really affecting tissue histology. But how do the images look like? Here on the left, I'm showing the image of a non-smoker and on the right of a smoker. What I'm highlighting in arrows are macrophages, which is actually the immune cell responsible to deal with toxins and microbes. And we quantified that smokers had a threefold increase in the presence of these immune cells. But the fact that these cells are so busy dealing with smoke toxins make, this, make them much less efficient when dealing with viruses, which is what happens with COVID. And this is how the thyroid looks like. These two images are, have the same magnification. And what we see is that thyroid follicles, which are these circles, get enlarged in smokers. These follicles are in charge of storing hormone precursors. So the fact that they get bigger means that these precursors cannot mature and then they cannot leave the thyroid and go to the final tissue. And so we've seen that smoking not only affects the lung, but the good news is that the sooner you stop smoking, the faster these effects can be reversed. So after more than 
30 group meetings, I'm happy to say that Ruben has quit smoking. He now vapes, but that's someone else's job. Thank you. <laughs>